I never wanted to mishandle the blessings in my life by my inability to recognize them. It was brought to my attention recently that I created my relationships with the same walls that I used to protect myself with. If I wanted better bonds, deeper loves, and honest relationships in my life, I had to get real about the walls and guards in my life I put up in place to protect me from the wrong people, not keep me from the right ones. In this video, I will unpack how easily my walls have formed, the excuses that I made, and ways that I'm trying to dismantle those walls for better relationships in my life. Let's get started. You prevent people from seeing who you really are. You push out both potential toxic and healthy relationships in your life. Though you don't deserve to be hurt, you do deserve to be loved. This is what makes putting your guard up so hard. Though the notion of a love relationship is exciting, the fear of negative relationships is totally debilitating. Letting your guard down means being unafraid to just be yourself and being honest with everyone around you so you can achieve happiness and community. This involves accepting the risk of more hurt, but realizing that it is worth it in the end. I grew up in a place that led me to believe that in order to survive socially unscathed, we had to create walls or guards to help our peers decipher who and who not to try. The public school system in the South was a complete prison, and in my observation, despite the district's efforts to build schools in what would appear to be developing middle-class communities, would unknowingly become a schoolhouse for the children of nurses, pharmacists, lawyers, professional athletes, tax evaders, boosters, and drug traffickers. All with the same idea of giving their children a modest life. I could be sitting next to a girl whose father worked for NASA as a geologist, and at the same time a guy whose mother stole clothes in different malls across the country and sold them online. And because he knew fast money too well, he felt every day at school was a waste of his time. If you were smart, you stayed to yourself, but even that wasn't enough to save you from being hated or tried. I'm from Houston. The city is fast-paced. I was raised at a time where nothing was off-limits or restricted. People weren't as socially sensitive as they are now. It didn't mean that the same things didn't hurt. We just never made organizations about it. You just created tougher skin. Walls guards, attitudes, and anything that didn't make you green or a square. The funny thing was, we were all insecure, playing a game of how well we could hide it, even if you weren't necessarily a fighter. You had to know how to have a verbal altercation with anyone and hold your own. No one was off limits. This made you respected. This made you cool. Despite my efforts to be kind, I learned fast how often people took it for stupidity and because playing dumb wasn't a game I liked to play, people would eventually hate me for my mouth. And it wasn't until I became an adult that I realized that this type of survival so young isn't normal. Maybe it is normalized, but I went to college already with tools of strategy and enough wit to recognize the social politics to know when I was being had or played. It served me just as much as it cursed me. I felt growing up in a public school system meant that I was developing socially in survival mode. I was always waiting for a ball to drop or waiting for someone to disrespect me by saying something slick. So much so that I anticipated it in situations where it was non-existent. But who could blame me? I had seen so much so young. I knew too well what people were really capable of. And because of who I was, I knew the lengths that people would take just to humiliate me. From guys, it was typical, you know, boys will be boys. But I never had long-standing relationships or girlfriends either. I felt the camaraderie amongst young women in my community at that time was complete bullshit. And it was fueled with a lot of toxic traits that probably dated back from the Jim Crow era that I just did not have time to sit down and unpack and honestly want to work through by myself, so I just kind of kept my distance, but this ultimately left me alone. I had trust issues. Really bad. Take the risk. 
letting your guard down does come with the realization that you will potentially be hurt. But that is also a part of life. I'm not saying be open with no boundaries at all. I'm saying it takes us experiencing the pain of what does not work for us or serve us to better understand and learn more about what does. To become slow to respond. In my experience, People always had the upper hand to me because of how quickly I responded and assumed that a person was doing something to me with ill intent. And by doing that, not only did I hurt the people that loved me who were offended that I would believe that they would do such a thing, and at the end of the day, I understood that. If I treated the people in my life I claimed to love like they were just anybody, but demanded that a person come into my life and cherish me, it was insane. But when I became slower to respond, and maybe didn't act on everything I felt because feelings can be wrong, I was giving benefit of the doubt where it was needed. And then I started to learn about the power of perception, and I understood that whatever my little mind at the time perceived to be true about the people in my life and the people that I encountered was every conceptual suffering I could think of, I did. Any type of suffering that I could conceptualize at the hands of someone else, I experienced, and it was my reality. And if in the end I felt that everyone was my enemy, that's who everyone became. I think leading with the heart is always cool. I don't think it serves anyone to pretend to be without cares. I always thought if you're too cool, you'll freeze to death. And despite what is popular to believe and the games that we play with one another about who has more pride, I think we miss out on a lot more by doing that. In all of the times that I've expressed the way that a person hurt me and that I was able to articulate the hurt to that person, I felt that I was more in my power than trying to play the tit-for-tat game. And also, sometimes... In my past, I would make the mistake of just reacting so quickly out of anger for something that someone did to me when it should have been a learning opportunity for them. I just assumed that if they cared about me, they knew exactly how to hurt me and they chose to do just that. And sometimes people aren't thinking to hurt you and they're not doing it intentionally and I had to actually believe that people aren't out to get me which is very hard to realize you know it's much easier to play the victim game and assume that people do things purposely to hurt to hurt us and that could be a learning opportunity for them and if we love them as much as we say that we do it should be our job and our duty to slow ourselves down enough to notify what we recognize, how we are hurt, so that person doesn't do it again. You know, it's the same thing as closed mouths don't get fed and not that they're feeding us anything but the things that they do for us, but if you really want harmony and peace in your relationships, outside of putting yourself in positions to lash out and get angry and always say what that person is doing wrong, maybe if you just were honest about the way things felt when they did those things, in the hands of people that actually care. If they say that they care, they should want to meet you halfway. If they don't care, that's a telltale sign that that person is probably taking up space in your life and they shouldn't be there. But in every opportunity where my pain was a growing opportunity for someone else, I felt there was genuine love there. And I always want to be in situations like that. And same for me. You know, I was hurting someone else by assuming that they were hurting me. The pride that I have and the ego in me that's assuming that everyone is out to get me is just so played out, you know. At the end of the day, I was doing it to myself. More importantly, I was hurting others way before they were ever even thinking about hurting me, all because of what my mind was assuming and the things that I would tell myself and old ideologies that weren't giving me this abundant life that I actually wanted. You know, outside of like wanting to be like in an abundant life and mindset, I think it's important for us 
to know where we're cutting ourselves off. No one wants to keep you from a fulfilling love, a fulfilling career, a fulfilling life, a purpose. When we automatically assume that something, someone, these powers are out to get us, it limits us. And I talked about it in my last video, but it's very true. It's been a long time that I've been in a relationship and I realized how hard it was for a man to exist in a relationship with me because of the walls that I put up. Not to say that I'm not justified in having them, but my walls were for the wrong people, not to keep the good ones out. It was like a very much a Shrek and Donkey moment that I had with my boyfriend where I was Shrek. <laughs> And the whole layers thing was was a thing and he was trying to get me to realize that like having walls is a, is a thing but you're putting walls towards me like you're 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 shutting me out like why do I deserve that and I'm like wow and I created those walls for those people because they were the wrong ones you know and I have to be smart enough and able to decipher who's right and who's wrong and I have to be able to give people a chance not only to like show up in ways that I'm not even thinking but also to make certain mistakes because they're human and also show me that they love me and that they care and when I shut people out and I create these walls I think I'm doing it to protect myself but I'm really keeping myself from the love that I've always dreamed of and if you're anyone like me I have such a like I'm a hard like ride or die type of real rough around the edges girl I know I don't talk like this right now but that's because I'm trying to relay a message but when I'm angry I get deeply angry and I express myself in all of the ways that anger manifests itself in me and not everybody deserves that, you know? And I think a part of me is getting back at all of the people that wronged me in opportunities where some person just made a mistake and it isn't fair for them to take all of the things that someone else should have gotten and it, there was such an imbalance in my reaction sometimes because up until a certain point, I honestly thought men were out to get me. <laughs> But that's not true. They're really, some of them are just cute little turtles, you know, and they're just out in the world being their turtle self. And, um, yeah. As much as I can talk about people that hurt, have hurt me and people that do hurt me, I hurt people just as much, you know? And the fact that I put on this thing and I, I want to create a platform about healing and love, but I also forget to talk about the ways that I've hurt people it's just not real and it's just not genuine and I wanted to make sure that I was creating a space where it's gonna it's gonna be real it's gonna be really me and for a long time I was nervous about that because not a lot of people are ready for the rawness of just being human and making mistakes and actually talking about what happens when we make mistakes like but I think when I am open and honest about who I am, I also give people permission to do the same and it creates this ripple effect of people doing amazing things in their lives. So honestly, I am happy that I made the decision to do this. Honestly, I'm going to be real. Like even purchasing the camera that I bought, I did it in a rage. I was in a situation where I felt like someone betrayed me and the money that I was going to use to buy the plane ticket and all of the things to get my revenge, I decided to buy a camera instead. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so happy that I did. <laughs> I'm so happy that I did because um, that was going to destroy me, literally. I was going to ruin my life by doing that and I decided to just sit down and heal and talk about 
something honest and real and something that I hadn't seen on social media in a very long time. But I knew that there was something in me that I needed to share, so I just started talking. And I'm happy that I did because I'm seeing so much feedback of people that feel the same. Like So like I feel less alone, even though in this life I put myself in positions where I don't have many people, me expressing myself, putting myself out there. It's kind of, I've had some rocks thrown at me, you know, and I knew that that was coming, but the amount of people that are just resonating, like really like feeling it on a deep level, thank you for saying that because I feel things so deeply, so deeply. Um, I just, I just, I can't be the only one. So thank you so much for reassuring me that God didn't make me just the way that I am for no reason he made me so I can be a part of communities like this and I can speak to people that are just like me and I, I, I saw a comment recently it's like when I was talking it was like I was a version of their soul and like we were able to see each other and it's like that I love that shit that's what I'm talking about that was a fire ass comment um so I want to do more things like that and um Thank you all so much again for watching. I appreciate you so much. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.